Hey there, this is MTG Degree bringing you the Ravnica Allegiance pre-release guide. Now today we're going to go over commons and uncommons because that's most of what you're going to see. So if you watch this video, you're going to be pretty darn prepared. However, I'm going to do an advanced strategy guide covering guilds, some rares, some of the cards that I think are standouts. That'll be out in about a day or two. Uh, if you want to catch that, you can subscribe and then just unsubscribe after. Genius. All right. Well, that being said, let's just get right into the guide. Starting off in white, we've got Foreboding Spirit, Knight of Sorrows, Ministrant of Obligation, and Spirit of the Spires. Now, Foreboding Spirit and Knight of Sorrows just slow the game way down, which is exactly what you want to be doing in Azorius and Orzhov. While Ministrant of Obligation is just such a good rate, I mean, this card is actually ridiculous, so play as many as you got. And Spirit of the Spires is going to make all those flyers uh, a little bit more useful, which is great when you're going to end up making a bunch of 1-1s. One -ones. For non-creature spells, I'm a fan of Arrestor's Zeal, Summary Judgment, and Sky Tether. Now, Arrestor's Zeal is just very cheap interaction, and I like that you get the bonus if you do it on your main phase. Um, Summary Judgment, uh, once again, we're going to be just sitting back with white and uh, not attacking that much, so this is perfect for that. And Sky Tether, if you are going to do the skies thing, you're going to be fighting in the air, then this is perfect. It basically makes their creature a blank, which is exactly what you want for one mana. In blue, we've got Chillbringer, Skatewing Spy, and Windstorm Drake. Now, Chillbringer is absolutely ridiculous. 3-3 three, three flyer that gets to tap something and keep it tapped when it comes in. Mmm, that is nice. Uh, Skatewing Spy is really nice in Simic. This isn't really the flying decks that we've been talking about before, but it makes your green-blue deck into all of a sudden a flyer's deck. And lastly, we've got Windstorm Drake, which is really amazing. We saw in white the other version of this, giving plus O, plus one. That is much worse than this. This is very amazing. If you're playing Orzhov, uh, splashing blue for Windstorm Drake is totally legitimate. Quench, Essence Capture, and Shimmer of Possibility are next cards. Now, Quench and Essence Capture are two mana counterspells that can hit their creatures, which is awesome. Um, and they're, they're just playable. And, uh, Shimmer of Possibility, now going four cards deep in a sealed deck is really important because your very best cards are so much better than your bad cards. So going so deep is very, very valuable. So I like Shimmer of Possibility and Sealed as well. Next up, we've got Slime Bind and Eyes Everywhere. Now, Slime Bind is just a removal spell, basically. It's pretty awesome because it has Flash and, uh, yeah, just two mana, so that's pretty good. Usually you don't get stuff like that in blue. Now, Eyes Everywhere. Eyes Everywhere is really interesting. You want to play it against people who aren't playing blue because you don't want to give them the option to give it back to you because um, then they're the ones that are making the informed decision. Now, this is going to make your opponent play badly just because it's on your side of the field, so don't take any rush to switch this for their creatures. If a creature is chipping in for two in the air and you're at 10 health, don't switch it. You just keep it there threatening, and then once they're forced to finally play something great, then you steal it. So don't just use this on your average junk. In black, we've got Thirsting Shade, Rakdos Trumpeter, and Blade Juggler. Now, Thirsting Shade and Rakdos Trumpeter are just there to get your spectacle on. Thirsting Shade looks like it's for Orzov because of the lifelink thing, but it's actually just a 1-1 one, one for 1 that you can use a little bit better later and starts hitting them for damage to enable Spectacle. Now, Blade Juggler is just the kind of thing that you want to Spectacle out, which ends up being a 3-2 that draws you a card for 3. That's pretty awesome, and the reason why we put stuff like Thirsting Shade in our deck. Next up, we've got Orzhov Enforcer, Debtor's Transport, Orzhov Racketeers, and Spire Mangler. Now, these first three cards are all great cards to get those spirits flying in the air, and then Spire Mangler is pretty decent, pretty decent, uh, even without considering that there's spirits in the format, but when you've got so many 1-1 one -one flyers, you know, buzzing around, this card becomes a lot better. Bloodmist Infiltrator is next. Now, this will basically, when you've got stalemate in the air, maybe you're playing your spirits and your opponents playing actual flying creatures that block them easily. Bloodmist Infiltrator is how you turn those into some real advantage. Chipping in for three a turn is actually pretty darn fast and a uh, good way to close out games. 
consign to the pit grotesque demise and clear the stage our next cards now consign to the pit is just wow they are making us pay a lot for this effect at common these days uh whoo but they always end up being playable and sealed so i guess we're playing it grotesque demise notice this exiles creatures so you don't get to have the one one spirits afterwards so great to point at orzov and lastly clear the stage is just absurd i don't even i don't even understand how this is considered a reasonable card ill-gotten inheritance is our last black card now i love effects like this that basically say hey this game is not going to go on forever if we keep going you're going to lose puts a lot of pressure on the opponent and the activated ability is actually excellent because there are many times where these very slow effects just like don't quite keep up with the aggression and here, if you if you stall out a little bit, boom, game continues. Spear Spewer, Tin Street Dodger, and Dagger Caster are next cards. Now, Spear Spewer looks like absolute trash, but what this is doing is it's setting up spectacle for you by always dealing damage to your opponent. So after you cast this, everything gets its spectacle cost, which is amazing. Tin Street Dodger is basically that 1-1 one, one for 1 that's going to get in there and uh, allow Spectacle, and of course you can also make him uh, unblockable so that you can continue that Spectacling. And our last guy is amazing against Spirits, so keep that in mind. Gravelhide Goblin, Smeltward Ignis, and Burning Tree Vandal are our next cards. Now, the Goblin, of course, just gets big. That's good. Um, Smeltward Ignis... I like this kind of effect where it's good early, and if you draw it late, then it also has some pretty sweet ability. So big on that. Burning Tree Vandal, this uh, ability is called Rummaging, and it's what red gets, and it's what red deserves. But <laughs> it is actually very good, even though it's not quite as good as looting. Scorchmark and Skewer the Critics are interesting, because Scorchmark is really good against Orzov because you've got a lot of creatures with one toughness in red, and this denies them the ability to have that 1-1 one, one spirit afterwards. Skewer the Critics, um, if you are properly getting your uh, spectacle going, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's a lightning bolt, which is, you know, one of the best limited cards ever. Flames of the Raised Boar and Gates of Blaze are next. Now, Flames of the Raised Boar is... <laughs> Wow, what a card. This is absolutely obscene and will absolutely destroy your opponent. It's, of course, a lot easier to do in Gruul, but not impossible at all in Rakdos, and so to definitely play this if you're playing red. Um, it's also very splashable because it's just one red symbol uh, and a six mana cost. Now, Gates of Blaze, you don't want to be playing in Gruul or, for that matter, um in Rakdos, you basically want to be playing this if you're going to play a lot of colors with a lot of gates, and then it becomes a very powerful spell. Otherwise, just leave it alone. Sorrowform Hybrid, Gruul Beastmaster, and Gatebreaker Ram are our first three cards in green. Now, the hybrid is reasonable early and gets big late. I like that kind of ability. Gruul Beastmaster is good for tons of surprise damage. Uh, you know that when you attack with this the first time, they're unquestionably going to block, so you're probably going to push a lot through. And Gatebreaker Ram is good for that that five-color deck, that four-color deck that uh, I am personally looking forward to building. Enraged Ceratok, Rampaging Rendhorn, and Troll Red Guardian are our Hulk Smash cards in green. Just be aware that Troll Red Guardian looks like he's a Simic card because of the whole Adapt thing, but is perfectly great in Gruul. Mammoth Spider, Sylvan Brush Strider, and Silhana Wayfinder are our next three cards. Now, Mammoth Spider is great against all those 1-1 one, one flyers going around, all those spirits, and also just good against even some of the regular flyers as well. Um, and that's one of the real weaknesses of green, so that's why we're playing that. Sylvan Brush Strider is great against Rakdos, so it might not make your main deck, but definitely keep a sharp eye on that. And... Silhana Wayfinder just smooths out all of your draws so well that you pretty much just play it in every green deck. Biogenic Upgrade, Stony Strength, and Sagittarius Volley are next cards in green. Now, Biogenic Upgrade looks like it's for Simic, but I promise you this will be amazing in Gruul as well. Stony Strength I like because there's a lot of plus one, plus one counter synergy in Simic, uh, as with Biogenic Upgrade, and 
the fact that you get to keep the plus one plus one counter afterwards makes up for the fact that you kind of have to finagle a way to win the combat even though you're only getting plus one plus one. Sagittarius Volley is the typical plummet that we get in green, however, it's been refitted to be amazing against spirits, so keep that in mind. Open the Gates is here because I just want to play that 5 color deck so bad, and this is a great way to do it. Senate Guildmage, Azorius Skyguard, Sphinx of the New Prov, and Senate Griffin are our first 4 gold cards, very exciting. Now. The Senate Guild Mage is absolutely excellent because its activated abilities are so cheap. This means that all of your turns will have super efficient mana use, which just is a great way to lead to a win. Azorius Skyguard is a very unfun effect to play against, and if you have two of these out, it's almost impossible to lose. The other two are uh, Decent Flyers and proof that Azorius is probably going to be winning in the sky. Law Mage is Binding and Depose Deploy are next two cards. Now, Law Mage is Binding is awesome. This is a common? I love this. It's basically three mana, kill anything. Mmm, big fan. Uh, Depose Deploy, neither side really blows you away, does it? But here you've got an option, and options are always awesome, so Depose Deploy passes the bar. Combine Guild Mage, Aeromunculus, and Frilled Mystic are our first cards in Simic. Combine Guild Mage is pretty darn good. Um, I would pretty much only play it in straight Simic, though. You gotta be actually going for the synergy. Aeromunculus is a great rate for a flyer that grows bigger, and Frilled Mystic. Mmm, I love this. What a ridiculously good rate on a counterspell, and getting that creature in there is so nice. Gyre Engineer, Galloping Lizrog, and Sharkto Crab are our next three cards. Now, Gyre Engineer is fantastic because you're putting a lot of mana into those adaptabilities. So, having that extra mana by two is really important. Galloping Lizrog just comes in absolutely enormous if you've got any, like, two, just two counters to spare. And Sharkto Crab is actually even stronger than the Lizrog. Getting to adapt and tap something down and freeze it there for a turn is just very strong. Applied Biomancy, Growth Spiral, and Incubation Incongruity are our next three cards. Now, Applied Biomancy is really, really good. Talk about tricky during combat. Every time I attack, I'm going to be thinking about this card against Simic players. This is very tricky, and I guarantee you'll get your, your money's worth every time. Grow Spiral is great for just getting that mana out there because you know you gotta cast some big things in Simic. Heck, Simic kinda gets even bigger than Gruul in many ways. Um, incubation Incongruity. In incubation is there because, as I said before on one of the other cards, just digging deep when your strongest cards are so much stronger in Sealed is a really nice effect. Incongruity I expect to be using a lot less because you're really giving them quite quite an actual creature there. Syndicate Guild Mage, Imperious Oligarch, Basilica Bellhaunt, and Grasping Thrall are our next four cards. Now, the Guild Mage is not that crazy good compared to some of the other Guild Mages, but just having these things where you can just put mana into abilities is always awesome. Imperious Oligarch is just giving you ridiculous value. <laughs> Basilica Bellhaunt is very unfun to play against, as is Grasping Thrall. Final Payment, Mortify, and Consecrate Consume are next three cards. Now, obviously I'd rather just have Mortify than Final Payment, but Final Payment is very cheap interaction, and 5 life is honestly not that crazy. Now, of course, if you've got some 1-1 one -one spirits flying around, those can be sacrificed if you can't afford to lose 5 life, and the enchantment thing is just not going to come up that often. Uh, Mortify is just amazing in all ways, and... For Consecrate Consume, I'm expecting you to cast Consume, uh, because it'll most likely get the best creature out on their side. The fact that it doesn't really let them choose the creature is why it's decent. Cult Guild Mage, Fireblade Artist, and Hackerbat are our next three cards. Now, Cult Guild Mage, that second ability, look at that. That means that you can basically turn on Spectacle any time that you want, which is a fantastic ability to have. Fireblade Artist is very good just because it's a 2-2 haste for two. Um, the other ability can be good in the late game, but um, yeah, just getting in there and getting that spectacle running is what he's all about. And Hackerbat is just really good if you cast it for its spectacle cost. And even if you don't, 
the two abilities on it are, man, very annoying. Rakdos Firewheeler, Rakdos Roustabout, and Get to the Point are our last three Rakdos cards. Now, Rakdos Firewheeler just is really, really aggressive. I love that. The Roustabout is really important because when it attacks, even if it's blocked, you still get that spectacle trigger, which is fantastic. And Get to the Point is just killing creatures at instant speed, which is always good. And for some reason on a Rakdos card, Scry 1, which you can't complain about. Clan Guild Mage, Zertog Goblin, Frenzied Erynx, and Sunder Shaman are our first cards in Gruul now. The Guild Mage, you've seen a lot of Guild Mages now, same reasoning. The Zertog Goblin is just very aggressive. It's either a 3-3 for 2, which is obscene, or you're just getting in there for 2 on uh, turn 2, which is also very good. Uh, Frenzied Erynx, I love its activated ability, but just the fact that it has Trample and can come down as a 4-4 for 4 is also pretty darn good. Sunder Shaman is outrageously huge for its size, just like Zertog Goblin is, and uh, yeah, they're both just ridiculous. Rhythm of the Wild, Savage Smash, and Collision Colossus are our last three gruel cards. Now, Rhythm of the Wild is very unfun for your opponent. All your stuff comes in either very aggressive or very large. Savage Smash is the perfect type of fight spell where your creature gets bigger and then fights. Um, if that lets your creature also get in, then they're taking tons of damage. Excellent. Collision Colossus, both sides of it are very good. For artifacts and lands, I'm interested in Gate Colossus and Plaza of Harmony. Now, these are both part of the Play Way Too Many Colors deck, which I'm excited to play, and I think is gonna be a real thing. We're gonna go over that in the next video. And, um,. Of course, their gates are going to also be ubiquitous in this format, just like they were in the last, and you should play them even if you're only playing two colors. Having two or three gates really makes your mana super, super reliable. Thanks for watching the video here today. Don't forget about that advanced guide that's going to be coming out in a day or two. Subscribe to catch it, or if it's already out, just go watch it now. That works. And, uh, Best of luck at your pre-release. If you enjoyed this video, give it that like if you uh, want to see more. Of course, that subscribe button's there for that too. And as always, I'll see you next video.